Now this, this is the type of science fiction film that I have been dying to see lately. I love this movie, and I'm honestly surprised it hasn't been getting more buzz coming out of the Toronto International Film Festival. I guess it technically did get some praise, but the acclaim has clearly been overshadowed by bigger movies like Joker, Ford v Ferrari, Knives Out, and whatever else have you. But I'm here to tell you that Ad Astra is one of my favorite movies of the year. But before I get into all the things that I love about the film, you should probably hear some of the negative criticisms associated with it. Firstly, it's a slow burn. Even with its 2 hour runtime, Ad Astra feels like it takes forever to get through. I personally didn't mind the slow burning nature of the narrative, but I will admit that even I started to wonder about when the film would ultimately get to its point. Secondly, this movie is very cold. Brad Pitt's character Roy is an emotionally distant character. He is very closed off and doesn't emote all that much. So as an audience member, I can understand how some viewers could find it difficult to empathize with or connect to Roy in any way. That being said, I loved Brad Pitt's portrayal of Roy, but I'll get into the performance in just a second. First, let's talk about the character himself. Roy is a legacy child. 30 years before the movie takes place, his father led a voyage into deep space to study all kinds of different planets in our galaxy in an attempt to find intelligent extraterrestrial life. But the ship and its crew were never heard from again after their voyage. Now, mysterious power surges coming from their old ship threaten the lives of everyone living on Earth. And it's up to Roy to embark on a daring mission to Neptune to uncover the truth about his father's old mission. That synopsis sounds fucking incredible. With how much this narrative sounds like it would have been right up my alley, you may be surprised to hear that I wasn't looking forward to this movie at all. And I think that has to do with the marketing. Much like Gravity before it, I didn't think the trailer did the film any favors. The trailers to this movie made me believe that Ad Astra was going to be some weird thriller set in space. But it's not, at all. It's a much more personal and introspective story that occasionally has sprinkles of action. Very light sprinkles of action, so just be aware of that. I think the people who enjoyed High Life for its small scale, heavy themes and realistic performances shouldn't have any problem getting into this movie. The scale is quite larger, but the themes are definitely still present, the performances are beautifully reserved, and the thoughtful concepts are just presented in a much more engaging way. So the performances. Brad Pitt is excellent. I know a lot of people aren't getting behind the stoicism of his character, but I loved it. Roy reminded me of the Ryan Gosling character from Drive. Like, imagine if the driver had decided to become an astronaut, and that's basically what you got with Roy. He's a complicated character. He has all of his emotions bottled up inside. They exist, but they're buried deep within. He just doesn't know how to express himself, and that makes him a flawed and perfectly human person. And that excellently goes in hand with one of the main themes of this movie, which I'll get into in just a bit. I don't know what kind of character people would have preferred Roy to be, but I'm glad he's not your typical hero archetype. Maybe people couldn't get behind Roy's character because, since he doesn't really emote much, we're told how he's feeling through narration. For some, I'm sure the narrated exposition will be annoying, but it didn't bother me. It kind of reminded me of the narration from Blade Runner. You know, the theatrical cut. Only better. Much, much better than Harrison Ford's narration. If you couldn't tell, Ad Astra reminds me of a whole bunch of different things, and I'm sure that's intentional. The best kind of movies build atop of what has come before, and Ad Astra has combined elements from some of the greatest sci-fi films to ever exist. Most notably, as many people have pointed out, it features the imagery and pacing and themes of a Kubrick film. I personally believe that Denis Villeneuve and Alex Garland were modern reincarnations of Kubrick, but with how contemplative this movie actually is, director James Gray may just join the two as a Kubrickian styled filmmaker. But Villeneuve and Garland both have an established track record, and I'm not very fond of Gray's past work, so maybe that statement is a little premature. Only time will tell. But more so than just imagery, Ad Astra is reminiscent of a Kubrick film like 2001 because of what it has to say. 
What is the meaning of life? Well, sometimes we make our own meaning, especially in the, in this case, literal, vast emptiness. The vacuum of space is probably quite symbolic of the void we often feel inside ourselves. In Roy's case, he misses his father. Roy revolved his entire livelihood around what he thought would have made his old man proud, and it doesn't help that everyone around him compares his own work to that of his dad's, which made Roy idealize his father and picture him in a certain light. So what happens to a person's worldview when the pedestal they put their parents on is put to the test? Roy may be physically going further and further into the depths of space, but internally, he's confronting his own perception of his dad. Ad Astra may be set in space, but obviously, the movie is all about fatherhood. Said father, Clifford McBride, is played brilliantly by Tommy Lee Jones. Going back to the marketing for a second, I was under the impression that Jones would be playing a simple antagonist in the story, but that is not the case at all. Jones plays such a complicated character, filled with flaws that ultimately make him nothing less than human. I personally loved what Jones brought to his character because I believed in his passion and his conviction. He has one mission, and that mission has defined the purpose of his entire life. Which goes back to the theme of the movie, that we create our own meaning. Clifford McBride was just a detached father, and because of that, Roy grew up to be a detached human being. So, it's not that Roy is a stoic character for the sake of being stoic, there's a reason behind his detached nature, and I think that says a lot about his personality. He made for a great astronaut, but he's not a great people person. That's quite a tragedy if you ask me. Pitt and Jones just had an excellent dynamic together. I really loved both of their characters. Everyone else in the film also does a solid job of acting. Liv Tyler, Donald Sutherland, Ruth Niga, and John Ortiz are all very good and well reserved. They all have short roles in the narrative, and I wish I could have gotten to see more of them individually, but that doesn't diminish how good their work was. I also loved the world in which these characters exist in. All of the minute details in the story make for a believable near future. The technology is advanced, but not so unrecognizable from what we have today. It makes me wonder about how the world will actually look like in the future. Will we have subways on the moon, or moon pirates, or constant psychological evaluations, as if we're some sort of autonomous robots required to take tests that are programmed instead of being seen as human beings with individual problems? Maybe the evaluations say something about human nature and how we go through the motions. It wasn't as engaging as the psychological tests found in Blade Runner 2049, but it was still an interesting concept. In fact, a lot of the minute concepts reminded me of Black Mirror, where the technology seemed recognizable, but slightly off, in an odd way. Interestingly enough, the structure of this movie is similar to that of Apocalypse Now, which is a nice surprise given that Grey has openly compared his movie to Heart of Darkness, which itself served as an inspiration to Apocalypse Now. Only instead of the main character Willard meeting a complete stranger like Kurtz, Roy has an emotional connection with the character he is confronting, because it's his own father. This is an outstanding improvement on what we see in Apocalypse Now because it gives the finale an extra layer of depth. I've never said these words out loud, but I don't care much for Apocalypse Now. The subject matter is interesting, but the characters never resonated with me. Although I will admit to being interested in the IMAX re-release that did come out for Apocalypse Now, I think I'm good now that I've seen a movie like Ad Astra. Plus, Unlike Apocalypse Now, Ad Astra does feature some engaging action sequences. I know not a lot of people have been enjoying the minimal action, but I honestly thought these scenes were exhilarating. They were only sprinkled in, but the scarcity of the scenes just made the rest of the narrative feel all the more profound. Some people claim that the set pieces feel random, and while I don't completely disagree, I believe each one of those sequences has something to say about humanity. Plus, we get to see how emotionally closed off Roy is during these scenes, which is both awesome and heartbreaking. Awesome because Roy is a total badass who doesn't let anything phase him because he's focused on his mission, and heartbreaking because he doesn't seem to show any kind of remorse for anyone else, despite the fact that we know that's not true. 
and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention how absolutely beautiful this movie looks. Hoyt Van Hoytma's cinematography is astonishingly gorgeous. Whether we're on Earth, or the Moon, or Mars, or in the far reaches of space, you will not believe how incredible this movie looks. And I absolutely loved how Max Richter's ambient soundtrack accompanied Hoytma's beautiful visuals. If you recognize Hoytma's name, that's because he's the same cinematographer from Interstellar. I guess he has a thing for space odysseys, and that is not a problem because I love his aesthetic. I did state that Ad Astra featured elements from all kinds of different sci-fi films, didn't I? Ugh, I, I just can't stop gushing about this movie. I sincerely believe it joins Gravity and Interstellar and The Martian as one of the best space films of the decade. And even if it won't be the most popular, it feels like a wonderful throwback to the greatest space movie of them all, which is of course 2001. And it is in these grand movies that take us into the farthest, furthest? Reaches of space where we learn something about our own humanity. Ad Astra takes us to the stars, but it teaches us that we're all we have, so we should enjoy our company and not grow too detached from one another, even if it gets in the way of what we think our purpose in life is. And I don't care what anyone has to say because even though some people are finding this movie to be incredibly boring, I cannot wait to see it again, because I would probably give Ad Astra four and a quarter out of five stars. Thanks for watching.